we back again here today. And from the last video, remember we were down, we ended off yesterday, I think down around 1600. Now look, we only down to $175. So we made back 14, actually 15, around 14 to 1500 so far today. And we are negative $57. So this is about to turn around. Remember, we got two contracts. We got a call option, a $800 strike price with a $9 premium. That's what it's worth right now. This one here, $570 call, expires February 19, 2021, $96.35 premium. And this one expires 12.24. So we got a little time on both of these. So right here, soon we should be seeing these turn uh back green so this should go back positive in a second hopefully if the price continues to move up so let's see if we get enough price action for that okay negative 32 now remember at one point this was down twenty eight hundred dollars when we logged on at the beginning of the last video we were down negative twenty eight hundred dollars so if we look we just went positive positive sixty six dollars positive sixty five so if we would have panicked and panic sold the last video we would have been out of twenty eight hundred dollars for no reason instead of just being patient and now we up seventy dollars seventy six dollars sixteen hundred and eighty one dollars just for today but we were so far in the hole we were so that, that we were over seventeen hundred and fifty dollars in the hole and look we made all that back in one one morning and we up $63 already. So now we back down negative 57. That's just the way it go though. You know, that's why I told y'all when y'all get up in some profits, make sure you secure your profits. Take those profits off the table. You see we up $35 right now. $47. 36, negative 47. So you see, it continues to you know flip back and forth. But hopefully, if we have a positive or a green day today, this will end up a lot higher today. Now, yesterday we lost about Tesla dropped off about like thirty dollars yesterday. So that's why you've seen that contract go so far in a hole. But you've seen we made it all back today. That's why it's important just to be patient. So we just gonna watch it for a little bit. I just wanna show y'all some of the things I'm thinking, you know, giving y'all some more insight to the mind of a trader, you know, the things that a day trader is thinking about, you know. So right here, we just basically checking out the landscape today for Tesla. We already are in on two contracts, so we not thirsty to jump in and make no trades. <clears throat> so we just gonna watch. Now, if this price was to dip down a lot and it dropped real far, then we would probably be trying to grab another call. But Tesla's price has been un uncertain lately. It's been a little shaky. So I kind of just want to sit back on the sidelines and just watch it a little bit. Especially that I'm already in now. And, you know, I got a call that's up $91 now. Just from holding this. Instead of losing $2,800. The way we were able to get a good entry like this is because we waited for a dip. We bought during the dip. Remember that. So we bought during the time. Let's see. So we bought this during the time when Tesla was down here dipping. You see these dips? So let's zoom out a little bit so we can get a, a better look. Okay, so we got dips here <clears throat> in the chart. Moments where Tesla broke to a low price. So let's say you see how it's traveling here, traveling, 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 and then it dips. That's the area you want to buy it. Traveling, traveling, traveling. Dips, that's the area you want to buy it. Even though here it was moving down. So this is what they did here. They 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 ran the whole price down. And uh just basically tried to shake off all the weak hands. They scared all the retail investors, which are basically the people who use Robinhood, new investors, people like me and you who 
are not Wall Street investors. We just, you know, sitting at home investing. We are called what they what they call retail investors. So uh, what they did was ran this price all the way down from 590s down to 540, a 50 price, a 50 dollar price gap to basically scare everybody out the way to sell their shares off of cheap so they can come in here and scoop them up for a lower price because they would have had to buy them up here at 590 each. So what they did was start doing a sell-off to scare everybody and then they was able to come and buy shares in this range instead. And now you see, once everybody, you see they sold off, they scared them here and it drops. It's going, 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 going. Then everybody realizes like, hold on, the price ain't really dropping. They just, you know, scared us off. Then it shoots back up from 460 all the way to 494. You know what I'm saying? That's over $34. Stocks normally don't do that. But this is Tesla though. So that's what happened there. So that's why you don't if you you know if you invested in a stock, you did your research, you looked it up and you know, you seen that the, the company was still having a good momentum, it was still heading in a good direction, they still had a lot of positive catalyst which is just basically news releases or new information or some type of information that would affect the stock price whether it be good or bad you look for information like that and determine okay with this information that's out what will the market sentiment be which is the mood of the market how will the market feel about this new information that we release or that's being released and then you can begin to make decisions off of that news as well as taking that news and combining it with your indicators like these Bollinger Bands, the supports, resistances, and then you could begin to paint the picture of what the stock is doing. So here, because it's the first <clears throat> 30 minutes of the day, normally Tesla does a really big drop off. As soon as the market opens, Tesla drops. And then it comes back up and then begins to do what it does for the rest of the day. But here, it's staying, it opened, jumped up a little bit, and it's staying right here. So that's a good sign that it wants to break out. You see, remember, what's this top line right here called? The top line above the candles. That's keeping it back. This line right here, this blue line, I'm dragging across, all the way across the top of these candles. That's called a resistance. So once this candle here breaks this resistance, that's called a breakout. So what we're watching for is, will this candle violate this trend line which just means break out of it will it go on the other side of it see it's holding it back right now it's keeping it back it's, it's the, the buyers and the sellers are struggling right now they buying they selling they buying they selling they keeping it real even but if we can get more power from the buyers to push up on this side <clears throat> it's a better chance that the price will begin to move up and if we can break this 595 resistance we don't have another resistance until, let's see, six hundred. So the next resistance is at six hundred, and the price is holding very strong at open right now. That's, I'm glad about that because I'm holding my two call options. But you see, it's it's right on this. Uh, okay, so if we zoom in, we can see it, it it broke a little bit above this line. So we got a second candle that's is breaking above it. But sometimes this can trick you in what's called a false breakout. So this candle will break out over here, but it'll only come right beyond it. Then you'll get another candle that looks like it wants to, but you see it's not really pushing up, pushing up. It's it's still kind of staying there. You see, now I just turned red and it's dropping back below this line. That was a false breakout. It kind of tricked everybody that tried to jump in right here. Like, okay, let, let us hurry up and jump in right here because we see it just broke the resistance line because if it breaks the resistance, that's a sign that it's moving in an upwards trend. So everybody that's seen it break the resistance here and they seen it turning green here and it started going green, 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 green. A lot of people started jumping in. And what they did was just switched it right back the other way as soon as those people jumped in. That's why you do not buy high. Remember what I taught y'all. You can use these bands to make your trading decision. The Bollinger Bands, your indicators. Remember these, this upper gray band here, this middle blue band, and this lower yellow band. 
you'll see right here across where I'm dragging the screen it says lower and yellow writing upper and gray writing and mid right here and blue writing those are the Bollinger bands as it touches this top over band or the upper band excuse me that means the price is high or it's expensive these bands will move and adjust as the price moves and they'll you know basically it'll just continue to move as this price moves it'll, it'll set it at new points it won't stay at this point the whole time so you see back here the gray band was up here but as the price began to move up they adjusted it and it moves further and further and further up and the same thing with the bottom band the further the price moves up the further this will move up but what these bands are saying is that it's a 95 percent chance that the share price will not fall between this upper band and well, it won't break out of this upper band and it won't fall below this upper band this is a 95 percent accuracy saying that so you can use these bands to basically say i'm 95 percent sure the price won't get this low and it won't get this high now it does it, it often touches those prices but sometimes you can say i'm pretty sure it won't go beyond that but as you can see right here we got this see, see we had a false breakout here we had this red candle it started green like it wanted to break out then we had this candle right on the line it finished green but right there and now you see we headed back down and we are about to test the VWAP we are we are about to fall below the VWAP this is the VWAP line right here this yellow this solid yellow number here VWAP VWAP 589.73 so this is a 14 day, the, so the VWAP 14, the number here just stands for how many days they're calculating. So what this means is they're taking the last 14 days and taking the volume weighted average price and seeing what it is and they make a line right here. And as long as the share price stays above this yellow line, the VWAP, that's a good bullish indicator. If it breaks below this, then that's a, a good uh, bearer sign. So right now we're still trading above the VWAP. However, you see this line up here, the resistance. You see the share price tried to go here. It went up, 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 boom, got blocked by the resistance. It went down, tried to come back up again, tried to try it again, boom, got blocked by the resistance. Came back down, it's coming down, and it's, it looks like it want to try it again. So this is the third time that it, it wants to test it. So sometimes the third time it might be able to break through. If it fails third, fourth time, then most likely it's on its way to head downward. So you see, it was it was it was gonna test it, but it, it didn't. So it just came a little further down. So what happened was all the people who bought up here, who bought new contracts and everything right here, they're gonna be a little disappointed as they see this price drop because they believed that it was gonna begin to keep moving upwards. So let's see where we at right about now. Okay, so we down 97 bucks. Not bad. You know, this can, you know, in two seconds, this could switch back to being positive, you know, $97. So, you know, we're not worried about this. It's only down 0.87%. Hopefully, we could stay green for the day. Negative 50. You know, I was uh, really hoping this would be worth, by now, a few thousand. But, you know, that's how the market makers do. They, they, they they do it on purpose they try to trick everybody you know they know they looking at okay where the price is right now what the market's been doing what would the average investor do okay the average investor would do this so because the average investor would do this we're going to switch the market and make it do this that's what they do and 80 percent or more of the market is traded on algorithms so it's not even real human beings you know buying and selling these stocks so what that means is these brokers and some of these people on wall street these big trading companies they use computer programs or algorithms uh artificial intelligence it's basically a computer uh program that is programmed to be wise at trading stocks so it runs off of formulas they can pre-program it to uh, buy and sell at certain uh, prices if the market meets certain conditions and they can layer these conditions on top of each other for one to cancel one out or one to trigger the other you know so it's, it's real deep but that's a little bit further but just know that that's the reason why you do not chase a stock price if it's shooting up then you missed it 
wait until it's dipping buy it in the dip if you buy it in the dip you got a better chance of profiting you buy it when it's high you got a better chance of losing money so we have 57 on this one right now let's take another look at the charts let's see what we're doing okay so we about to test the VWAP again or not the VWAP but the resistance up here this is the resistance line this blue line is the mid Bollinger Band this gray line up here is the upper Bollinger Band this yellow line down here is the lower Bollinger Band this deeper yellow line is the VWAP line which is a sign that if it's trading above this line it's still bullish and bullish just means that you're in belief that the share or the stock itself will continue to go up so right here you see we just broke the VWAP now that's a bad sign for people who don't want the price to go down the fact that it just broke through this VWAP which is this yellow line is is you know saying that the price will be headed down you see it even went past because it broke this VWAP, it collapsed and went all the way down to this lower Bollinger Band. But notice how once it touched this lower Bollinger Band, it's starting to slow up. You see it just free fall from here. Once it broke here, it just free fall. But now once it got to this Bollinger Band, it's starting to go back up. Because that's a signal for buyers that the price is really cheap right now. So that's saying, hey, right now, this is probably about as cheap as you can get Tesla. So your best bet is to buy it. So you see now it just turned to a green candle because it touched this lower band here. That was a sign for buyers to start buying. So if you master buying right here, remember, this is how you know you're buying at the dip. Buy when it touches this and, and, and making sure that it's still in an upwards trend. You know, if it's free falling, you know, in a, in a down, downward trend, then don't go off of that because it'll keep hitting this as it moves down. It'll keep hitting that. But see, like right now, it's a you know it's showing that it could potentially with it still pushing down right here. It's showing that it could potentially push this even further. So because it did break through this, it's gonna move this band lower. It's gonna move this upper band lower. It's gonna move the VWAP lower. It's gonna move the mid Bollinger band lower. It's gonna move all these bands lower because it it just broke through this price. Now we got a, a new support here see at 584 we can see that because right over here 584 so this is the support here so it's going to bounce off of this and try to retest up here again we'll see now it may not it may start to turn up here and then die right back off and then begin to fall through this support and if it falls through this support then it's going down today so let's see how far we down now with 588 so we just you see five hundred dollars right there we just went down so y'all seen several times we were up about ninety dollars all the way back down to losing five hundred dollars that's why i always say take your profits off the table until you become a better trader and you're more confident and more uh just certain that the stock will move in the direction that you betting that it will take them profits off the table but like I said, I'm not panicking because of this right now because I know that the stock is still moving in an upward direction overall because of the S&P 500 inclusion. Now, you see, we're only down 3.5%. Now, for me, that's not a lot. Uh, what I like to do, like I told y'all, I don't start really paying too much attention to it till around 10%, 15%, and then maybe at around 20%, if I feel like I was completely wrong and I could see it, then I may cut my losses. But... I'll hold all the way to 50% before I really cut the whole thing. So this is a $10,000 value. So this can get all the way down to $5,000 before I say, okay, I'm going to just take my loss on it. Because sometimes it could turn around, just like yesterday's case. It was it was down $2,800, almost $3,000. $2,000 away from my 50% mark. Now imagine if I'd have cut it off at that $2,800. I'd have just lost $2,800 instead of waiting the next day. And, you know, I made it all the way back in the green or pop you know plus ninety dollars but now negative four hundred and twenty nine but that's still better than losing twenty eight hundred and now it's three hundred you know three ninety seven so that's you know better than losing uh the twenty eight hundred so let's see so you see it's supported right here it's not really falling too much it's not really falling too much below that 
So now you see it, it, it came down here, bounced from the support. It didn't touch the support all the way because they wouldn't let it. They started buying it up before it got down here. That's why it, it, they started buying it up right here. As soon as it hit 586, they like, oh, yeah, we need that. So they bought it up and pushed it up. And what they're doing now is they're day trading it. They're day trading it off the VWAP. So they bought low, sell high. They're not looking for big gains. They're not looking to make, you know, uh, just an astronomical uh, amount of money from this. They're, they, it's called scalping. They're taking 300, 300, 400, 500, 300, 400. You know, they just taking small hundreds every couple trades. You know, they, 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 buy, they wait till it touches this band here buy because that's the price i mean not i'm sorry they wait till it, it touches this lower band this lower yellow band buy here some people are traded at this vwap line early some people are traded at this mid band the mid bollinger band and some people will hold it all the way back till the upper band the higher if you buy it the lower you buy it and the higher you sell it the more money you make so these people who buy in here and they letting it go about right here they're just doing quick scalps because they're not sure if the price is going to continue to move down. So they just want to buy in, let it go up a little bit, sell it. It's bouncing back down. People bought it, supporting. So go up a little bit. And then once it comes either to this yellow line, people might start selling again. This blue line, they might start selling again. Or it might get blocked at this resistance. Or if it does push through this resistance, it's a 95% chance to say it won't go past this. But as you can see over here, this lower yellow line, that's a 95% chance it won't go below. It actually did go below there. So it does happen sometimes, but this is a sign to buy, especially if it's holding this yellow line like that. Because that means buyers, as you see, it, it, hit the yellow, it hit the yellow line here with this wick, broke the yellow line. Next candle, fully on the yellow line. Then the next candle, buyer showed up. They said, okay, that's, so this is the cheap price right here. You got it on the yellow line. Here we come. Boom. They showed up. Here come more buyers. Boom. It hit this green. It hit this uh, VWAP yellow line. The day traders sold. Pushed it back down. As it's coming back down to this yellow line, boom. Another signal for everybody to buy in because the price is cheap. Boom. Buyers jumped in here. And they, you know, basically playing the same game all day. Let's see where we at again. So now we're only down $317, you know. So it was just down $500. That's why you cannot trade emotionally. Because let's say if, you, if I was trading emotionally and I seen a number, whatever your number is where that's a lot of money to you, where it would be a lot of, a big loss, you will begin to panic. You know, you will start getting nervous like, oh, shit, like, you know, like, let me not, you know, lose out on all this money. You know, so that might make you make a premature decision to sell which is called a panic sell. Sometimes you got to ride it out. But we're going to pause this video here. I'm going to check back in with y'all, update and let y'all know where this has went. So see the price is falling again. It, you see it, it came down here to the lower Bollinger Band. It was a signal to buy. It bounced up. Remember I told you the day traders sell at these lines. They use these lines as measurements to sell. Went up here, day traders sold off. It start to dip. Dip buyers came and supported it here. Started to sell off again. See it touched this yellow line. As soon as it touched this yellow line, it turned right back green. Because that's a sign that the price is cheap. You can make a lot of money just trading this strategy right here. But I'm gonna end this one here. Shout out to y'all. Stay tuned for the next video.